Cryostasis beakers are unique beakers that only mix the reagents when the beaker is tossed. So this has many offensive applications, and some defensive. To get cryostasis beakers, you must reach this biochemical stasis, which is a tier 1 biochemical research. And in this example, it's literally the first thing I could unlock. These aren't much use, though, for scientists, at least scientists, unless you also get chemistry, which are both tier 1, so as a scientist, you don't have to work very hard to make full use of this. Chemists can actually make use of this earlier, because as soon as cryostasis beakers are researched, they can make them in their med fabs, and they already have chemical dispensers and whatnot. <laughs> so for only two and a half steel and half a sheet of plastic, you can make a cryostasis beaker. Obviously, a cryostasis beaker on its own is not all that useful, but with just a chemical dispenser, you can already make really dangerous items. So for how cheap this is, you can do something like make a chlorine fluoride bomb, which you normally could not make without killing yourself. So normally, as many of you probably know, as soon as you would press chlorine and fluorine together, you'd explode. With a cryostasis beaker, that is not the case. So I can make a mathematical equation of 15 chlorine and 45 fluorine. This allows you to make a somewhat on-the-fly impact grenade, more or less. So as soon as it hits the wall, it explodes. So this is not that impressive. As we can see, even with that mixture, the damage is basically non-existent. And at least in a cryostasis beaker, are not that practical. However, if you ever get your hands on a water tank, which is not that difficult to do, you can upgrade the water potassium bombs, which again would normally explode instantly upon contact. However, with water at 30 water and 30 potassium, you have a, a stronger impact grenade. The area of effect is wider, it does more damage. As you can see, it's not a ton more, but it is indeed more. The nice thing about this is, too, is that it doesn't even destroy the beaker, so there's an opportunity to recover them. This is only the tip of the iceberg of basic cryostasis grenades. Um, I'm going to go into slightly more advanced strategies to cause a lot more damage. A pneumatic cannon can make these cryostasis beakers significantly more deadly. In order to make a pneumatic cannon, it's quite easy. You just open your construction menu, and you need a pipe. So the first thing you do is you just make a straight pipe or whatever, and it takes one single piece of steel. You must have a wrench on you. And you can just unwrench this pipe and keep it on you. And to move on. The rest of the cannon, you just need makeshift cuffs. So you're going to want to find some low voltage wires. So again, just type in cuffs. All this is done in the construction menu. You don't need any technologies to make a pneumatic cannon. And now we just need some steel. So people like science have pretty much no issue at all making these cannons. This requires a little bit of setup, but I think the results are surprising. I haven't ever seen this done. Eight cryo beakers with 30 water, 30 potassium into a pneumatic cannon makes pretty much a discount China Lake. And it doesn't really take that much setup to do this. And I would not recommend chlorine fluoride because the explosion's weaker. It can space an area like the floor. That's not often that useful, especially for a pneumatic cannon. But if I stand uh, just like three, four tiles away and just hold left click at a target, you can get some disgustingly good results. So you crit an unarmored target in four. And I destroyed... Oh, I even spaced the floor. I actually didn't know that was possible. So you have to be a little careful about that. But it does a lot of damage. It could destroy grills entirely, reinforce windows. And those walls are pretty close to crumbling. This one requires a little bit more setup. And the fact that you need plasma and a grinder and normal beakers. But... You already have this tech, the grinder might be a slight problem, but you really just need ground up plasma and not a whole lot of it. And in another beaker, you're going to want 10 oxygen, 5 sulfur, 5 hydrogen, and then 5, 3 counts of 5 phosphorus for 15 total. And then you just dump it all into one cryo beaker. So essentially, you have 15 plasma, phosphorus, and sulfuric acid, which will make log, which is basically just gaseous plasma. I'm not using the, the pneumatic cannon for this because I feel like the pneumatic cannon has a tendency to spill liquids before you want it to. And inside every person's inventory is an emergency flare. You're going to want this. So if you set up your hotkeys correctly, with like shift B for example, you could light the flare and put it in your backpack. And people might hear it, but it's not that big of a concern normally. And you could also hotkey the cryostasis beaker. So, if you see a target that you really don't like, or an area you really don't like, you can pull out your beaker, and about three or four tiles is as far as I would try to throw it, chuck it, 
and then throw the flare and get the hell out of there. I mean, obviously I'm not running, but it basically lights a pretty large area on fire. It will heat up the area as well because it is quite literally a plasma fire. <coughs> and you could always make more beakers. It's not expensive. Plasma is the only hard part of it. Um, as far as I'm aware, I've tried to figure out ways to make it explode into fire, but I've just not been able to. Uh, at least not a cryo beaker. And as you can see, I'm in this room. That's actually a pretty massive room, and it's overpressurized and overheated, and that is just one cryo grenade. So for things like revolutionaries is what my mind goes to. You could chuck these at security, and they're going to have a hard time dealing with this. They'll have to get in their hard suits, which will slow them down. Um, obviously, it, would, it could make the revolution a little bit harder too, but you could definitely prepare for this. Uh, this is also really useful as a syndicate because, I mean, the stuff's free. Anything you can make that doesn't cost telecrystals to cause damage is very important and very useful. Uh, but yeah, if I could figure out a way to make it explode on contact into fire, that'd be awesome. I've tried a lot of things, so maybe someone knows and that'd be great if you could share. This one can also be really useful, and I would not again recommend this in a pneumatic cannon. You just need 20 oxygen silicon and 20 water. And that is the recipe for space lube. The thing is, though, space lube overflows, so it means you produce more uh, space lube than you put in. So, like, this is actually a decent bit of space lube in a impact grenade, essentially. And all you need is water to make this. And if you just throw it, like, right here, you basically just made it so you can't walk through this area without no slips, without slipping. So you can... If you're a traitor or something with no slips, or you're like a revolutionary janitor or a janitor in general, um, you can basically make it very, very difficult to follow you through these. Or at the very least, you make it so that people need to use mag boots to run through it, which again, uh, security will not have these. You can't even walk through space lube, is what makes it so damn powerful. So that is also a very strong non-lethal use of this. And again, it doesn't break the beaker. And it's basically free, it just takes water, so you could make eight of these or whatever, lube an entire hallway, and basically make yourself unchaseable to security. Um, that's all I'm going to cover for cryo beakers, I could go on forever. Uh, there's definitely other cool recipes out there. I'd really, really like to see an impact explosive fire grenade. Um, if somebody knows how to do that, I'd love to know. I would make a whole other video on it, because I think things like Molotovs and stuff are kind of missing in this game, and these kind of remind me of that. But that's all I got.